Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house. I am your host, Khadija. Um, now listen, before I get out of here and um, do some work this morning, I um, really wanted to share something with you guys. And uh, somebody sent it to me, actually, and it's from this site, I guess, called Shrink for Men. Um, helping break free from abusive relationships since 2009. So I want to encourage you guys, anybody that's in a, um, especially men that's in an abusive relationship, because you know um, men don't talk about this kind of stuff a lot. In fact, uh, they'll just chalk it up to uh, my girl is emotional or you know women are just emotionally and they actually accepted uh, mental mentally ill mental illness and mental behavior as a uh, her time of the month or whatever so uh, um, I, I really want to share with you because this transcends um, uh, the gender so if you got a if you're a woman then you're in a relationship with a woman or if you're a man, you're in a relationship with a man. It doesn't matter. This this is um, behavior uh, specific, not gender. So anyway, let me go on and get it out here. It says, narcissistic, borderline, psychopaths, and codependents. And then it's got mutual mommy and daddy issues. Okay. Many, many women who have been in a relationship with a narcissistic, borderline, or a psychopath Describe taking a parental role response to their disordered partner's perpetually childish attitudes and behaviors. Hmm. I can tell you, I know too many relationships like that. Um, while this is superficially true, there's much more to it. Narcissists, borderlines, histrionics, and psychopaths are immature. When you're in a relationship with one of these personalities, you're dealing with someone who is somewhere between a troubled toddler and a troubled teenager in terms of their emotional and psychological maturity. Many of uh, her clients, uh, this is what she's saying, many of my clients who share uh, actual children under the age of 18 with narcissistic or borderline sociopathic wives or husbands um, have watched as their children mature and surpass their adult partners in terms of their emotional development. Wow. If you've entered into your relationship wanting an equal partner, a functional adult rather than someone who knows how to pretend to be a grown-up when practicing image management, you'll eventually resent the parental role in which your disordered spouse thrusts you. In many cases, the targets of narcissists um, volunteer for this thankless position hoping that things will magically change someday. This is especially true of people who have codependency issues. Common rationalizations include she'll grow out of it once she becomes a mother. Uh, he has such a tough childhood. Uh, she has low self-esteem and she'll be more secure once uh, uh, she learns to trust me and experiences of love. All of his exes were abusive. He just needed to be with someone who really appreciates him. Uh, uh, she doesn't mean to the stuff she says when she's angry. That was just the alcohol talking. She's just stressed out about uh, the wedding. Uh, uh, she'll feel more secure once I propose. Uh, I just need to be more patient, more loving, make more money, take on even more financial responsibility, and not have appropriate emotional responses to being abused. And he or she will treat me better. Mm. Many codependents are aware of the disordered person's issue going into the relationship. However, they believe they can help, they can fix, they can rescue, save or love the narcissist, borderline or psychopath into becoming an emotionally mature adult who is capable of reciprocating love, kindness, generosity and respect. This never happens, ever. 
and you'll have just as much success trying to change a rattlesnake into a golden retriever. Recently, a man mailed a email to inquire about couples counseling with his wife from whom he uh, believes is likely NPD. He explained that he's looking for a therapist to convince his wife to be a good person. I explained that neither counseling nor life worked that way. He didn't want to hear it. If a 40 something year old woman or man doesn't understand that it's not okay to be an asshole and doesn't care how their behavior impacts those closest to them, there's nothing I or nobody else can do about it. That's where the m rubber meets the road. And you have some choices to make. Namely, self-respect or abuse. It's just that simple. Self-respect or abuse. Wow. In the relationship or accept the disordered person for who they are. What some BPD apologists refer to as radical acceptance. Is every, okay, then the next question is, is everyone who becomes involved with a narcissist, psychopath, or borderline codependent? No, not at all. Um, not all men or women who marry a, or date a narcissist, borderline, histrionic, sociopath, and other psychopaths are codependent. Sometimes these emotional predators are bullies and can fool people with good boundaries who are overall emotionally healthy. Many characterologically disordered individuals are high functioning. That mean that doesn't mean that they're not every bit as toxic as their low functioning counterparts. Obvious human train wrecks. Um, it means that they're better able to wear a mask. Okay, and when it suits them. For example, when they are seeking social acceptance or approval, or they are early in the love bombing or idealization stage of a relationship. Uh, just think Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Non-codependent people may get involved with the personality disorder, but they're much quicker to end the relationship and less um, likely to an agonize about ending it once the narcissist removes his or her human suit and reveals the alien lizard creature that lurks within. Here's the difference. Healthy hell. I stopped seeing that woman I met on Tinder. She interrogated me about my female friends on Facebook and wanted to know why I hadn't changed my relationship status yet. On our third date, phew, what a psycho. Here's codependent Connie. He says he doesn't want a committed relationship, but I think he's just afraid of intimacy because he's been burned so many times. I try not to take it personally when he says he'll call and doesn't or shows up at my place at 2 a.m. Af um, after a night of drinking. He just doesn't know what it's like to be with a woman who really loves him. Mm. Healthy people don't tolerate abuse and call it love. Healthy people don't want to have a relationship with children or adult I mean, in adult bodies. Healthy people don't tolerate being manipulated, exploited, and think it's okay or it's normal. Healthy people don't stay in relationships out of fear, obligation, and guilt. Mm. Remember that fog we talked about? Fear, obligation, and guilt. Only codependent, codependent people do. Wow. Um, and that's very, very interesting that, um, you know, that, that she would say that. Because I, I agree with that totally. <laughs> I mean, wholeheartedly, 100%. Wow. So, what's going on in the codependent personality? Uh, what? So, what's going on in the codependent personality disorder pairing? Mutual mommy and daddy issues. Perhaps there are some codependents and personality disorder individuals who don't have mommy and daddy issues. But for simply sake, let's just agree that they're an exception to the rule and not the norm. Narcissists and borderline typically coupled with codependents or other disordered individuals and tend to raise new generation of narcissists, borderline sociopath, and codependents. The children of narcissists, borderline, and sociopaths who grow up to be codependent are usually parentified as kids. 
Parentification is a role reversal between parent and child in which the child becomes the emotional caretaker of the parent or acts as if the caretaker or other siblings instead of the parent. Yep, that was me. Parentified children can, can be used as a surrogate spouse including co-sleeping with the parent as late as adolescence, ick, 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 confidant, therapist, mediator, or peacekeeper between the parents, or the projected ego idea for the parent. Mothers who enter young girls into heavy beauty pageants, you know, you know those types, parents who are obsessed with their kids being star athletes, cheerleaders, models, actors, etc., mm in which they can vicariously hope to achieve through the child what they weren't able to uh, capable of achieving on their own regardless of whether or not the child has the aptitude or interest in these things and these pursuits if the punishment by participating in their per parentification and in some cases emotional and physical incest in case it still isn't clear to any of you out there. The parentified child receives love for participating in their own abuse. Let me say that again. The parentified child receives love participating in their own abuse. They receive love for taking on adult responsibilities and not showing anger, resentment, or hurt while they are being abused time and time and time again. Although some especially abusive parents enjoy seeing their children hurt in terror, but the child better not show anger or hurt afterward or in any way hold their sick fuck parent accountable. If you were parentified, if you were a parentified child who is now a codependent adult, you probably learned very early in life that your emotional needs and overall well-being were secondary, at best, to your parents. In extreme cases, I've asked clients, so what makes you happy? They don't know beyond finding ways to make their abusive, narcissistic, borderline, psychopathic partner happy and avoiding disappointing or making them angry. Damn. All impossible tasks by the way, what are narcissists, borderlines, histrionics, and sociopaths seeking in a relationship? To go back to what I stated in the beginning of the article, narcissists, borderlines, histrionics, and psychopaths aren't looking for a parent in the true sense of the word. A loving, nurturing adult who implements rules, structure, boundary, and consequences. They're looking for a parentified child, a servant an enabler, an emotional wet nurse, a housekeeper, a cook, a breadwinner, emotional or physical punching bag, a day laborer, scapegoat, and personal assistant who has neither the power or the voice in a relationship. These perpetual toddlers, teens, and tweens want the perfect mommy or daddy who will love them unconditionally. Even when they're cruel, selfish, self-absorbed, irrational, dishonest, unfaithful, financially irresponsible, abusive, violent, and tries to have you arrested for telling them no or wanting a divorce. Or what the personality this or, uh, or the person calls <laughs> domestic violence. If you practice any one of those. Um, they want a mommy or daddy to adore them all the time and give them never ending attention when they're ignoring mommy or daddy. For example, my narcissistic ex would spend hours on Facebook masturbating his ego. Like 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 ooh like ah like ooh like 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 narcasm for sure. And expected me to sit there silently and adoringly watch him. And if I went and did my own thing while he chased likes, I was accused of ignoring him. These individuals also want mommy or daddy to let them call the shots. In other words, they want mommy or daddy to let them, the child, be in charge of everything. 
finances, reality, the actual children, just everything. If you're a codependent, you're most likely attracted to a narcissist, borderline, and sociopathic adult partners because their similarities to your parent. In the love bombing or idealization stage, you get what seems to be the unconditional love, adoration, and acceptance that you didn't get as a child, or only under specific certain circumstances and conditions. Like you sacrifice your well-being, identity, individuality, childhood, and wants and needs for mommy and daddy's ego demands and pathology. This is also why you fall so hard for the love bombing. Many of my clients state she or he seemed too good to be true. It felt like too much too soon. But they wanted to believe so very badly and ignored their gut instinct. And common sense. How many times have you done that? I am not trying to be funny. Let me stop. Pause for a minute. And I'm going to try to get through it real quickly. How many of y'all be honest with yourself. Had that little feeling in your stomach. That said. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And you was disobedient. You did it anyway. And mm, voila. Now you're here. Anyway. <laughs> um, once you're hooked. And the narcissist mask fall away. You are once again face to face with your respective childhood monster. Parentified children may caretake their parents. But parentified children are not in control. Parentified children have no power. They have the illusion of power. I.e. if I can make mommy daddy happy. Do everything right. And never disappoint him or her. And make them angry. She, he or she will love me. Damn, that's a big burden for a child. This isn't power. It's magical thinking and a comforting lie. Parentified children and other abused children tell themselves. And if you're codependent, it's the same lie you done told yourself as well. Narcissistic wives or husbands expect their partners to sacrifice their own well-being and dance on attendance on them. They believe like children, manage finances like children, and demand to be indulged like spoiled children. Codependents comply hoping to go back to the idealization stage or to avoid their anger, emotional withdrawal, or silent treatment. You may clean up the narcissistic messes, subsidize the psychopath schemes, and soothe the borderline's never-ending dysregulating emotions but you're not the one in control and really you really have no power the narcissist borderline or psychopath will never grow up but you can and you do it by taking back your personal power Psst. boundaries and self care the way you take your back boundaries and self care wow I know that was pretty long and I hope I didn't bore you guys but that's something to ponder on today okay and um I'll see you next time hey if you like what you hear please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time in the mental house bye bye